This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Okay, so um, we had our issues with the live streaming, so everything is perfect. Now it works? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. Like okay, it's I, Thank you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so um, in the beginning of, uh, of our tshuva, like we said, so we we felt that we are not strong enough, so um, and I was afraid not to be able to stand in the pressure from the sides of our secular families and all that is uh, connect concern Judaism and keeping mitzvot and stuff like that. So we decided to to move to the to the dark side, to the ghetto, to Masharim. And, uh, and over there, we, we were strengthening ourselves. We connected ourselves to a religious, very radical, strong community. And we, 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 we felt that it's building us. But after a while, um, it took us a long, long time to realize, but we had many signs along the way, we realized that it was not the right way for us. It was contradicting the, the structure of our spirits, the nature of our creation. And we had to make some changes in our life. So for an example, my wife and I, we were taking the children to much more, many more vacations and traveling in, in Israel than other people in our community back in those days. We were going out of the house and we were we were doing things that people over there in that area wouldn't do because we were loyal and, and attached and aware to, to who that we were in, in those days, in those hours, in those moments. Now, after a longer period of time of finding ourselves sinning to ourselves and being someone that we're not and just following certain fears and, and agreements of, of, of that area and all kinds of, of rules of the communities over there and, and, and we felt that we are going very far away, being drifted very far away from our real essence of who that we really are. And then you're checking yourself again and you find, okay, you know, but today I do have the power to make that change and you can take yourself out of that place of being afraid and being so narrow-minded and obeying and running and following and doing and always making sure that no one is upset at you and no one thinks bad things about you and and when you wake up you realize hey I'm not here to serve people I'm here to serve Hashem I'm here to serve the Creator and when we woke up so it helped us so much we took our stuff, all of our belongings, and we just moved to a mixed neighborhood close by. And it felt so good. It was so amazing for us. That change was healing for us. So I won't tell you that it was easy. It was very hard. And many fears came in my mind and told me, hey, you don't know where it's going to take you and what's going to happen and what's going to be and your children. Now they're being exposed to other culture, to other things that you were protecting them from and on and on and on. And in the end, when you're checking those things, and today I have a life experience of another six or seven years looking back from that moment of changing our life after 12 years in Masharim, that today I can say for sure that it was the right move. Not only for me, it was so healing for my children as well, as well, because they also have roots of souls that are connected to ours. They're also coming from us, so it's also much better for them to live the life that we are choosing today as a family, not under that pressure that we lived before. So now, again, in the beginning, it was the right move. It was the right decision, because that's what we felt that we should do. But you should allow yourself to bring yourself into those life situations, into those intersections of your life, into those hard, huge questions that you have, and to, and to ask yourself what the truth is. 
and not only to follow other people's opinions, because then you can go lost between those opinions. Like we said, you have righteous people that every one of them brought his flavor to the Torah that he taught. You read the Balatanya, it's a different righteous man, different author wrote, composed, built that book. Then Likutei Moharan that wrote, Rabbi Nachman of Resler wrote a different book. And even like we said, if they will speak about the same concept, even if they're going to discuss the same issue and going to try to bring you to the same place, it's going to make a different effect on your life because they came from a different world. And they must bring their spirit to the Torah learning, to the Torah teaching. So also you, every person, every one of us, as an individual, we must be also loyal to ourselves. We must remember who we really are and to bring it into our learning. You cannot just try all of the time to erase yourself, to clean yourself, to purify, purify yourself, to, to cleanse yourself, to, to nullify yourself to the righteous ones, to the rabbis. To, they can mislead you. They can make horrible mistakes in your life and they will not gonna stand there by your side to repair and to help you to heal yourself. They're gonna tell you, I'm sorry. They're gonna tell you, I don't know, that's what Hashem wanted and on and on and on. Because when you are counting on flesh and bones, when you're counting on people, you're in a problem. So what are you going to do with that verse? The verse is saying, Kechol asher yoruchu, yorucha. Whatever they're going to guide you, whatever they're going to command you. Okay, I'm asking you on who that verse is talking about. Who is that person that is that qualified rabbi, real righteous leader that can lead you? If you found someone like that, that achieved per 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 perfection in his Avodat Hashem, that he's like Moses, that he's like Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that he's like the Balatanya, that he's such an angel on earth, yes, throw everything and follow him. But if you still have doubts, and if you're still not sure, and if you saw some lackings in that rabbi, even if he is great, and look, he is learning 15 hours every day, and he's very polite, and he's very nice, and he's also very generous, and he's helping, and he's supporting, and he's making shalom bite. Fantastic person, but is it perfect? If it's not perfect, so you cannot throw yourself and you cannot throw your responsibility for your own life and for your family life on that person's back, even if he is great, even if he is huge. A person come down to this world alone and he will leave this world alone as well. And he will be judged on every thought, on every act, on every word that he made in this lifetime. And you must have that ability to feel sure about who that you are and to feel complete about yourself. So for that, and that's why I'm saying it, it's so important that we're going to introduce our real selves to ourselves, that we're going to meet ourselves, that we're going to know who we are. Because as long as you don't know who you are, you cannot function, you cannot work. You're just following and losing your mind, trying to imitate other people, trying to attach yourself to stronger people, in, 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 and, and you don't really know where that path is leading you. You don't know where it takes you. But only when a person finds his real self, then he can grow and the sweet fruits that will come from him, we won't be able to describe their sweetness. Because when you will connect yourself through the roots of your own soul to the Creator, the light of the Creator is going to shine through you and going to illuminate the world around you. Now, how you do that? Nice theories, amazing words of Torah. How you do that? It's very, very simple. I said it many times. To find who that you are, it's not a problem. To know who you are, that's not the issue. Soon we're going to explain it. That's not the problem. The problem is to believe that that one that you found is really you, is important, is worthy to listen to. You should be loyal to Him, to that one that you are. That's the hardest part of them. 
Okay, now who you are? You know which books are talking to you? Yes, you know. You know which songs are inspiring you? Yes, you know. You know which movies are? Yes. You know which are the friends that you're communicating with? Yes. You know what you, which colors you like to wear? Yes, you know. You know what neighborhood you prefer to live in? Yes, you know. You know if you like the winter or the summer or the spring? You know, you know many things about yourself. You know which foods are healthy for you, are building you, giving you energy, you know after which kind of food and way of eating you're falling, drowning in the American comfort sofa and can't pick up your head up from the sofa anymore. You know what is building you and you know what is destroying you. You know when you're eating out of your own anger and stress and fear and you know when you're eating because you want to have more strength and power to go and do great things. In you know. You know those things about yourself, but while you know those amazing details about yourself that are describing the real you, that are telling you where you are holding, what is your spiritual level, what is your emotional status, what is your physical level and ability, what are your powers, what is the good things, for, you know everything about you because you have that sensor inside of you that experience life with you. You have that ability to know when you're eating something, you know if you're eating it now under pressure or that you're calm and relaxed and you just picked something because you know that it's going to give you some good energy and you feel like flowing with that eating and it's good for you. You know those things. The problem is that into that amazing pure stream of information someone dropped few drops of poison, of foreign thoughts and negativity, darkness into your way, on your perspective, on your way of judging yourself, and he is breaking that poison, is breaking your spirit, and breaking your self-esteem, and destroying every right conclusion that you make while being aware to yourself. You're eating, so instead of enjoying that healthy eating, that good positive eating, he is corrupting your thoughts with negative thoughts. You're fat, you're disgusting, look how you're eating. All day long you're eating, you became so, now you need to go, you need to puke, you need to, I don't know what, making you crazy with negativity. All day long you're eating, only candies, what's gonna be with you? You're wasting your time, people can't eat. People came to that place in life that they're not able to eat. Every bite, I'm sinning. He thinks that he's sinning. People are not able to eat, are not able to learn. Oh, I'm learning, wasting my time learning that concept, that issue from that book. I have so many other books. Thousands of books, you're right, but wait, you're with an open book now in front of your eyes and you can't learn, can't focus. Why? Because there are another 20 or 40 or 70 on the shelf waiting for you to learn from them. And it's written that books that you never opened and read from them are cursing you and you don't know what's going to be and you're not learning, you're neglecting those books in the bookcase. Crazy. That's not the truth. Now you have 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 1 hour, 45 minutes with that coffee break. You can open that book and sit and enjoy learning. You can take some nice buckets of holy pure water out of that book and you can't do it. Why can't you do it? You have those 45 minutes. You have that 10 minutes that you can sit and learn. Why can't you enjoy that learning? Why after finishing, closing that book, you cannot feel good about yourself and saying, wow, thank you, it was so great. Why all of the time, but I'm not doing this, but I'm not doing that. Because of that negativity, because of those filthy water, that poison that is impuring all of your water purification system. And everything you do is being poisoned by those negative thoughts. And those negative thoughts are contradicting the truth. They're destroying the stability of your life, they're ruining your self-esteem, they're destroying the happiness of your life, it drags you down to sadness, to depression, to lose your satisfaction from life and every sweet thing that you have in your life becomes bitter and spoiled and wrong and crooked and bent and, 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 and horrible. 
and even mitzvot and great things that you know that are amazing that you're doing are being corrupted, are being destroyed in your own mind while letting the negativity and the darkness to take control on your way of thinking. So in every moment that you sense that negativity penetrated into your mindset, into your way of thinking, you need to fight against that negativity with all the weapons that exist in your weapons, in your tools, in your, in your range. You must use every power that comes in your mind to destroy your own sadness, your own depression, your self-anger, your criticism about yourself. You must destroy it because that's the animal that destroys your life, that takes out the sweetness and the happiness, the satisfaction and the joy from your life and planting horrible sadness and black bitterness even into the good things that you do in your life. The enemy, the evil inclination is the foreign thoughts, is the negative thoughts, is the horrible, horrible sadness that takes over our thoughts. So in every situation, if you feel that you're doing something good, you must stay loyal to who that you are and to fight the negativity and to fight with it with every single way that you can find in your life means that you should sing, that you should tell jokes to yourself, that you should go out of the house, that you should call a friend, that you should make fun of yourself, that you should clap your hands, that you should do whatever you feel like doing. Even it's written, Le'olam yergiz adam yetzer tov al yetzer ra. You should make yourself upset on that evil inclination. If you're finding yourself falling to sadness, to depression, you should make yourself upset, not on yourself, on your sadness, on that evil inclination to make yourself upset and to fight. For an example, if now you're trying to do something good with your life, you heard there is a class, I want to go to that class, I want to participate, I want to hear that class, great. And now you feel that negativity, that sadness, that laziness is taking over you and no, probably it's going to be too cold and I'm already too late and it's going to take me 20 minutes to, to dress and to prepare myself. 20 minutes, that's a joke. 45 minutes <laughs> and, and what I'm going to do and I'm not going to make it. What that you should do is to make yourself upset on that sadness, on that depression that is for sure trying to hold you back from the success of your life because you know that after that you're going to go out from the house, everything will go smooth. Your life experience already taught you that. So what if you're going to be late? Today I was late in half an hour because I was circling the, the Muna Center. What can you do? You can't find parking in Queens. So what can you do? You must believe in yourself and to make yourself upset on your sadness. So it means that you should tell yourself, you know what, I'm going out of the house in five minutes and I couldn't care less how I'm going to be seen, what I'm going to wear, what are people going to think. I'm not thinking about it. I'm taking one thing from the closet and I'm going with that. Or you can do the opposite. You can do something, it depends on you. Just be sharp. Be sensitive. Be who that you are. Say to yourself, you know what? I won't feel good with myself if I'm not going to wear my best things, if I'm not going to put my makeup, if I'm not going to if I'm not going to take care of myself, I won't be happy. So you know what? Not 45 minutes, one hour and a half I'm going to put my best dress in the, in the laundry machine right now. I'm starting it all from A to Z and in one, two hours I couldn't care less. But when I'm going to be ready, I'm going out from the house, even if it's only to um, Starbucks, coffee beans, I'm going to make my, buy myself a cup of coffee and I'm going back home. And then I'm going to go to sleep. But I'm not going to go sad and depressed to sleep. I'm not going to let the evil inclination take over my life. I'm going to fight. 
I'm going to fight in every way, in every option that will cross my mind. I'm going to destroy the sadness because it's not my sadness. It's poison that is poisoning the pure water of my soul. Because when you check yourself, you see that you are a happy person inside. You are innocent. You're sweet and naive. That's who that you are. That's the nature of your creation. You don't need to finish all the Bible, all the Talmud, all the Shas, all the Zohar Kadosh with Perush Bala Sulam and Matok Vindvash. No, you don't need all of that to be who that you are. This is also something great that you can do with your time. But if you haven't done that yet, it doesn't mean that you are not the child of the Creator. That you're not carrying a holy soul that is brighter than the light of the sun. It's written on the, on the heel of the first man that it was brighter and more beautiful than the sun. It was shining and more illuminated than the light of the sun, his heel. And we know that on us, it been said on the last generation in Ikveta de Mashicha that we're coming from the heel of the first man of Adam Rishon and Eve, his wife. So even if you are from those lowest, lowest souls that came from the heel of the first man and his amazing wife, it doesn't mean that you're dark. It doesn't mean that you're not shining. It doesn't mean that you're not fantastic. You're brighter and more gorgeous and beautiful than the light of the sun in the sunniest day of them all. We don't have an access to the light of our souls because we're denying our real being, because we're not following the wisdom of our hearts. And people that are not following the wisdom of their hearts, are not following the light of their souls, are doing it because that they are afraid to count on themselves. They're afraid to fail. They're afraid to make mistakes. They're not true, but I don't know what to do. But if I will be wrong, and if I'm not going to consult enough, if I'm not going to ask, how am I going to know? The reason that you lost your self-confidence is only because that you are following for a long, long time after negative words that have been said to you. That you're following those criticism, those bad words that have been said about you during your lifetime. You are following the evil inclination of the people that were teaching you and guiding you and helping you to, and instead of helping you to grow, were destroying your self-esteem and breaking your spirit. It can be your parents, it can be your best friends, it can be your siblings, it can be your teachers, your rabbis. It's people that have not accomplished perfect perfection in their own life journey. And while they were still judging and criticizing themselves and hating themselves for their creation, something that they're not involved in, so why to hate yourself on that? But they were not educated enough. They themselves were not connected completely to the light of their souls. And they were in, in charge on your education. So unfortunately, they destroyed you in many, many ways along the way. And you are still following their guidings, their negativity, their darkness. And that's why you don't believe in yourself. But if you will follow the light of your heart, you will see that you're not bad. So you won't make no mistakes. Not to know what to do, it's not a mistake. To stop and to ask for help, to make a phone call and to consult with a friend, to ask for guidance, to say, I don't know, it's not a shame. That's a beautiful thing. To express your scars, to express your weaknesses, your lackings, doesn't make you ugly, doesn't make you a sinner, doesn't make you wrong and bad. It makes you honest. In the Gemara it's written, Hashem is telling Moshe Rabbeinu, the main highest prophet of all times, Hashem is telling him, you need to teach yourself to say, I don't know. Because you might also make mistakes, and if you will make a mistake, 
people will catch to that mistake and they're gonna blame you for your mistake but if you will say I don't know you stayed honest Hashem is saying that to Moshe so if Moshe can be wrong and Hashem gives him that advice we for sure can follow that advice it's not a shame to say I don't know if you haven't learned that concept, if you forgot that thing, someone, something made you forget things in life. Some trauma, some stress, some, some fears, some things that are shaking your stability makes you forget some things. What is more honorable and nice and sweet than the person that is saying, I'm sorry, I forgot, I don't know the way, I don't know the address, can you remind me your name? What was your name? Please, can you tell me again? I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Can you please have... That's nice. It's not insulting. If you're going to play, oh yeah, I know your name, yeah, no problem. You became a liar. You became a liar because you're afraid to admit the truth. I don't remember. How can you remember thousands of people? So what if he remembers you? How can you remember thousands of people? Who are you to remember thousands of people? So you forgot one. So you don't remember the address. So you don't remember when you said that meeting. What, you, what can you do? Be honest. Make a phone call. Tell him I'm sorry. I apologize. Stop making up excuses to build another patch and another patch and covering and plastering the first mistakes. Admit. Say I was wrong. And flow with who that you really are. With the wave of your honesty. With your spirit today. With who that you are. And be proud of who that you are. You don't need to satisfy other people by serving Hashem. You need to satisfy only one. And He's always happy from you, with you. Always. He's looking at you and you're charming. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that... The Zohar Kadosh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he knows what he's talking about. He's saying Hashem is looking at us only with one eye of kindness, of mercy. That's how he sees you. Only with love. Only with mercy. That's how he judges you. That's how he sees you. So sweet. Trying so much. <coughs> Admitting your mistakes. Dealing with your failures. Able to say I'm sorry. To apologize. Making another step. When I see the comments on my YouTubes, you know, it's like, it's crazy. If you have a little bit free time, you're going to try to read the comments of Facebook and YouTube on my videos, you can lose your mind. People's life are changing, is changing in a way that we cannot understand the size of, 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 of my effect, of this movement, the Muna project effect in the world, we cannot understand. You're going to read the comments on YouTube under the videos of my lectures. You won't believe it. I don't believe it. But then I cannot argue with it. I see that those people's life been changed because of hearing my honesty and telling me, thank you for being so honest. Thank you for, for fighting for the truth. Thank you for, for, for sharing with your life and doing this and that. And, and they're just being honest with me and thanking me and appreciating me on my effort that I am aware to my effort. So I don't have no contradiction on what they're saying because they're just approving, they're just accepting, recognizing my effort, my sweat, my tears, our effort. And when they see it, and I see that they see it, so we're becoming together. And when I see that I achieved all of that only by being honest, only by being truthful to the voice of my soul, only by fighting against everything that is not right as much as I could, as much as I can. So I understand from it that every single one of my students are able to do at least as much as I did. And maybe even more. We can never know. We can never know. Because I haven't done anything special. Maybe for you it's special. Because when you look at it from the side you say, wow! It's so special, it's so amazing. But the truth is that if you recognized it, if you enjoyed for my words, for my lectures, it means that you recognized and thought 
that you once had in the back of your mind. You recognized yourself in my lectures. You recognized your own truth, your own honesty in my lectures. That's why you related to me. That's why you felt good hearing me, because I was expressing very well with my Israeli accent your thoughts, your life conclusions. So, actually, it's not special at all. Because it's also your light, and it's also your light on yours, and yours, and yours, and on, and on, and on. And thousands of people on Facebook, and other thousands on YouTube, and on Sound... Rabbi, I heard your last class on SoundCloud, and I don't even know what SoundCloud is! I don't know how you can put the sound in the cloud. I thought only Hashem did it on Mount Sinai. That was the voice of Hashem was talking through the clouds of honor. Thank God, Hashem, sound cloud, great, wonderful, whatever. <laughs> yes, no problem. And Hashem, it barach, is delivering this message to your houses, to your iPhones, to your iPads, to your MacBooks. Why? Because it belongs to you. He just helps you, he delivers a mirror to your houses that you will see the light of your own souls. I'm just a messenger here. I'm just helping you to recognize your true selves. It's not me. It's not me. It's you. That's what you're recognizing in my classes. You're coming back to your true selves. It's you. There's nothing special in me. The special thing is that your soul are shining again. And you need to go with that. And to believe in yourselves. And to go and to spread your honesty. And your pride and your happiness. And your satisfaction from life. Even if you find that satisfaction from that old jazz player of 70 years ago that no one remember his names anymore. But you do. So go and spread that. Because you don't know, it might touch the heart of your surroundings, of your beloved ones. Someone on your Facebook feed will wake up from that song that you posted and he will say, hey, you know, you reminded me of something. And maybe that's the reason why Hashem woke you up this morning with that music in your mind. Maybe that was the exact moment that you and him will be friends and in five years from now, you're going to say, wow, it's so amazing. A jazz player from 70 years ago made us to be such good friends. And look what we achieved in the last five years. How many fantastic experiences we, 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 we experienced together. How many understandings, how many developments. And it's enough that one time he will share a nice post that you posted in his feed and it will go to different circles and you're saving lives of people in ways that we cannot imagine and cannot describe. How we reach today to more than 50,000 people, I'm not checking. A few, few weeks ago, I said in a lecture of mine on, on a video that I saw that I had, 50, I said that I, I had 26,000 views on it, 26,000 views on a video, and then I checked it again, I saw again on YouTube, and I saw that it, it, it grow to, to be 56,000. Another 30,000 views on that video. So immediately I said it in class, I was very happy. I said, today I checked it and I saw 56 views. Today I checked it and it's above 60. Another 4,000 views in one month, on one video. So, how does it happen? Was it you? No, you're not 4,000 people. It's 4,000 people. We're talking about real life. 4,000 people that watched the same video in one month and been inspired and woke up and enjoyed that content. And why? Because they recognize themselves in that video. Like we said before, 
The test and the mission is not to know who you are. It's to believe that who that you are is important and it's great. And now to go with who that you are and to fight for justice, to fight for purity, for good, for kindness. To do as much as you can with the power that the Creator gave and planted inside of you. With who that you are, with your talents, with your skills, with your power, under your time limits. And you can never imagine what is your power and what is your effect and what you can do. A friend of mine in Los Angeles, he received for me a box with Tikkun Aklali that we made of the Amuna project. Tikkun Aklali, a few words of Chizuk and, and, and our logo and information. He distributed that box of Tikkun Aklali. He put it in coffee shops and in places that he went. And immediately we saw the effect of those Tikkun Aklali that he, that he gave. Another hundreds of views from that area of California, of Los Angeles, joined to us in one, and a half, one month and a half that he spread those Tikkun Aklali. He was putting it in, 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 in in, in, in coffee shops, in restaurants, in Bate Midrash, in synagogues. He was just going and handing them out to his friends. Another five here, another three there, another ten pack on that counter, and walking away. And we saw an increasing number of views of at least another 1,500 v people, browsers, in that time period of, of, of that month and a half that he was distributing that Tikkun Aklali. You can never know what's going to touch the life of your friends. But if you will be honest and going to express the light of your own soul, so the people that are your friends, your beloved ones, will enjoy the light of your soul and they will be inspired by you. Because Hashem made you friends for a reason. Hashem brought you to be close to those people for, to the, to, in that neighborhood, in that office, in that company, for a reason that is hidden from you. But when you will be connected to who that you are and going to allow yourself to speak and to laugh and to talk and to express your thoughts and your emotions, you will touch the hearts of your surroundings of those beloved ones, those holy souls that are waiting for years in the darkness to hear one word of truth. And if it will come from your mouth, you will be so lucky. You will find so much satisfaction in your life that you touch the lives of people, that you affected in a positive way on the life of people. And this is an amazing gift. But it can take place in your life only if you will dare to be who that you are against other people's opinion, against other people's criticism and negativity, and their own sadness is not belong to you. Their depression and negativity and criticism not belongs to you. It's not you. Who are you? Ask yourself, and now go with it. Go with it. You will see that it will be charming. You will see that it will be fantastic. You will see that you will be so proud of yourself. You will feel so good. And Hashem will be much more proud than you can imagine. Because you will express your goodness. You will express the light of your soul that is a godly soul, that is a part of heaven from above. Chelek Eloka Mimaal. That's who that you are. Don't let that poison of sadness and negativity break your spirit because it's been said by rabbis, because it's been said by your parents, it's been said by your partner for life. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that it's the truth. Also, huge righteous people made mistakes. And the real righteous ones were the ones that were able to admit in their mistakes. Those are the heroes of the generations. Those are those ones that are a role model, a life example for us to learn from. How to deal with your weaknesses, how to admit, go to consult, go to ask, go to learn, go to work on yourself, to improve yourself. This is the job of the real righteous ones, the heroes of, of, of all generations.
and we can be like them. It's not hard. And it's the only path for happiness. It's the only way to achieve complete happiness. You feel sad when you're not yourself. You're being happy when you are yourself. If you read from a book that you don't want to read from, it doesn't bring you to happiness. But if you found that book that you were looking for so long and then you read it, now you're happy. It makes you happy. If you like one song and you finally put your hand on that old record and now you can hear it, now you're happy. You're crazy, but happy. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> crazy, but happy. And you will affect the hearts of other people to learn from you as well. And the beauty of Hashem is that He is so colorful and so great that He holds inside of Him all the colors and all the shades of all of our complex souls. He's holding all of that inside of Him and more. So we must allow ourselves to express the godliness that has been given to us as individuals and by that we're going to increase the light generally in, 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 in public. And the light will spread on and on. Thank you very much. The Muna Project is a non-profit organization. I'm asking your support. Please help us to increase the number of souls that we're saving, thank God, on a daily basis. Help us with your generous donations. Help us support our non-profit organization, Amuna Project Inc. And also help us distributing the books, the children books and the CDs. You can buy them online in the store. Also here we have, you can help us buying more than one for yourselves and also for your friends, for your people. And help us to spread the word of Amuna of faith in the world. And Hashem will see the generosity of your heart and by that merit will answer to all of your prayers and requests. Amen. Can you hear us? Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.